This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Friday morning, November 21st. I'm James Spann. We'll stay dry today and tomorrow. Storms return late in the weekend on Sunday. The big question involves the possibility of severe weather. And, of course, we'll uh, take a look at that. We'll look at Thanksgiving week and much more. So let's go. There's a big picture this morning. Clearly, the pattern is changing. The big long wave upper trough over the east is lifting out. And in the southern branch of the jet stream, a short wave is coming into Southern California. And that will be advancing our way, and that will bring our next round of rain in here before the weekend is over. Numbers all over the board this morning. As cold as 30 in Fort Payne to start the day, but the Shelby County Airport is 15 degrees warmer at 45. But everybody should be up in the low 60s today. Up on the watch warning map, some winter weather issues up north. Looks like a winter storm watch in effect for Chicago and Des Moines. As uh, the system that's going to bring rain here will likely bring snow up here this weekend. But we'll focus on the thunderstorm possibility. This is the severe weather outlook today. A marginal severe weather risk over parts of North Texas, South Oklahoma, up around Wichita Falls. Tomorrow, an enhanced severe weather risk. And again, I think everybody that watches these videos know we have the new categories here. Uh, the enhanced risk is over parts of Southeast Texas including Houston and Corpus Christi. A slight risk runs all the way over to Mobile. And keep in mind, this outlook runs until 6 a.m. Sunday. And if we have any issues in Alabama, it would be toward that hour, toward uh, sunrise Sunday morning. Now, this is the day three outlook for Sunday. And this matches our ongoing forecast pretty nicely. The standard slight risk of severe weather basically in Alabama along and south of U.S. 80, south of a line from Demopolis to Selma to Montgomery to Opelika. There is a marginal severe weather risk Sunday as far north as Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, and Anniston. And, of course, we'll uh, look at all this in detail here in just a second. Here's the overall rain for the next five days. Ballot through Wednesday morning of next week. The really big numbers from Mobile up to Charleston. Now, suggesting there could be a zone of three inches or more in through there. For our part of the state, the rain amounts should be lighter and is a pretty tight gradient. Uh, we'll say about one inch here. And as you work your way up north, the amounts there will be lighter. All right, model fans, the GFS, this is the OZ run, valid at noon today. And, of course, this is at 500 millibars. There's your shortwave energy coming through the southwest United States. Uh, down below that for us, the day will be dry, and the high should be in the low 60s, uh, partly sunny. All right, this is tomorrow. There's a cool 1,032 millibar high on the, on the middle Atlantic coast and as discussed, that will likely set up a fairly sharp thermal gradient. But the day should be dry. Uh, probably a good bit of cloud cover, but no rain. Uh, this is a look at temperatures coming off the uh, high-res NAM Saturday at uh, 3 o'clock. And you can see the, the deal. You've got uh, you know Fort Payne is at 51. It's cold up there with the wedge. Uh, it's a you know cold air damming type thing. But then you go over to West Alabama and you've got 61 at Tuscaloosa. Birmingham is at 59. So we'll just say an average high Saturday around 60. For East Alabama, highs in the 50s. West Alabama, highs low, maybe even mid-60s in the Mississippi border. So just be aware of that. The temperature Saturday will just depend on where you are. All right, Sunday, here's our storm system. Uh, this is the uh, upper look at noon. The short wave is taking on a negative tilt, which uh, enhances the upper difluence and the general lift in the atmosphere. This is the surface look. A surface low is near Harrison, Arkansas, 985 millibars with rain and storms coming in through here. And, of course, this is the synoptic scale. The key to this is going to be on the mesoscale. Uh, this is coming off the high-res GFS, the new parallel GFS, much higher grid resolution, Sunday at noon. Uh, it's got a 994 millibar low over Missouri. And you can see evidence of a big MCS that's maybe coming through the uh, uh, Gulf Coast Sunday morning, and that's moving over into Georgia at that point. And I think, uh, you know, the Sunday morning thing uh, will be closer to the Gulf Coast. And I honestly don't think we have any severe weather threat here Sunday morning, you know, if we have any, it's going to be near the Gulf Coast and it might even be down there. Heavy rain is the big threat. But let's look at the severe weather parameters. This is six o'clock Sunday evening. The surface low is over Illinois, uh, southwest of Chicago. 
And uh, this is a look at CAPE. This is the uh, instabilities, and you can see the surface-based CAPE values uh, are higher late Sunday. Uh, in fact, uh, they ramp up to uh, almost 1,000 joules across the whole state, really. And the question is, can we get new storms that develop Sunday evening? A, a dry slot's going to be coming in here, and the sun might break out. That's going to push the instabilities higher, but can there be something to trigger storms? Uh, this is the low-level jet Sunday at 3 o'clock. And uh, across our st state, the numbers are peaking at about 50 knots. They're higher east of Alabama. Shear value Sunday at 3 o'clock, uh, about 30 knots across North Alabama. The higher values again off to the east. And this is the Energy Helicity Index Sunday at 3 o'clock. Higher values over the southern half of Alabama. So, again, I think what's going to happen, we'll see a rainstorm event uh, after midnight, Saturday night, and Sunday morning. The heavier rain with that probably near the Gulf Coast. In fact, should be near the Gulf Coast. That lifts out. We kind of have a lull, and then Sunday afternoon, the sun might break out, the air becomes unstable, and with a dry line type feature coming in here, could we see new storms form? And if they do, they'll be pretty strong here because, uh, you know, the temperatures come up towards 70, and uh, the air will be somewhat unstable. But there's still a lot of questions involved here. But again, the, the clear message is discussed earlier the better severe weather risk should be over the southern half of the state, but clearly it's something to watch as we get into the weekend. All right, Monday, everything is out. Uh, a cold front coming in, and really, it, I think it comes through in dry fashion. Could there be a shower Monday? Uh, yes, but I'd say the chance of rain is relatively small. This is Tuesday. We get into colder air. Uh, highs drop in the 50s. We've seen evidence from time to time there might be a touch of light rain here, but this run really not showing that. We've got a, some risk of a few showers Tuesday. We might be able to take that out soon. And this is Wednesday of next week. You can see shortwave energy. I say shortwave. This is actually becoming more of a phase trough over the east. And uh, that's the situation down below that. Busiest travel day of the year. For Alabama, just kind of cool and dry. Uh, highs in the 50s and lows in the 30s. Those lower thickness values are mainly because of the colder air loft. This is not like the air we had a few days ago. And really, no major storminess. Uh, we got some rain off the Atlantic coast. I don't think that'll affect the big East Coast airports. Uh, maybe some snow around the Dakotas and Montana. But again, for travel, looks pretty good here nationwide. Thanksgiving Day for us looks cool and dry. Highs in the 50s, lows in the 30s. We have seen other runs that are colder, we should mention here. But whatever, the consistency and the idea of a dry forecast, uh, forecast is very good. This is uh, Friday after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Dry and rather pleasant. If that's right, we might touch 60. And this is, uh, and again, I, I don't have the graphic to show you, but if I do the day beyond that, uh, Iron Bowl Saturday would still be dry. So, again, everything looks good out there. We'll go out there deeper in the forecast period. This is December 1st. Evidence of the next rain event coming in here. In the end of the forecast on December the 6th, no sign of any cold trough. In fact, heights are tad above average, and down below that, temperatures probably about where they should be, and evidence of some showers coming in from the west, but no sign of any Arctic blasts in here in early December. In fact, there's a look at our temperatures. You can see after that warmth, uh, Sunday and Monday, temperatures come back down with highs around 50 and lows down around freezing uh, around Thanksgiving the following weekend. And again, temperatures stay about where they should be into early December if that all works out. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 4 o'clock today. If you can't catch us this evening on the live stream of the television site, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless.